from Television City in Hollywood. Jack Benny. Ruth Hussey. Gary Crosby, Edward Everett Horton. Larry Keating, Mary Wick, John Hoyt. Olive Sturgis, Ronnie Burns, Carol Lee. And introducing Janet Parker. Starring in The Shower of Stars. stars making their television appearance in full color. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, maker of these five great cars. Plymouth, Don, DeSoto, Chrysler, and the exclusive Imperial. Chrysler Corporation, the forward look. Your host for Chrysler Corporation, Bill Lundigan. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have the pleasure of presenting on our first shower of stars of the season, Jack Benny and his very lovely guest, Miss Ruth Hussey, in a television adaptation of one of Broadway's successful hit comedies, Ronald Alexander's Time Out for Ginger. Now, as the play opens, we find Jack Benny in the role of Howard Carroll, Addressing a Even meeting at the local high school. To you, and in spite of what anyone may say, those are exactly my sentiments on the subject. In conclusion, I reiterate, nothing is more sacred than the right of the individual to pursue happiness as he or she sees fit. Anyway, having three daughters of my own, in this school, I doubt if there's anyone who is more familiar with the problems of teenagers than me, or than I. <laughs> than me? <laughs> than I. <laughs> what you students do not understand is that your principal, Bob Wilson, is a regular guy. He's more than just an educator, a symbol of authority. He's a real human being, a pal, the kind of a man you can walk up to, slap him on the back and say, hi, Bob. <laughs> no one knows that better than, than I. Because you see, Bob and I used to go to school together, and I must say that he was quite a boy. He was caught smoking in class, necking in the corridors. <laughs> and not only that, but during his senior year, he cut so many classes that they finally put his picture in the post office. <laughs> Remember, Bob? <laughs> and now, in uh, regard to the athletic program, I would like to spend a little time discussing my own football career. In all modesty, it was common knowledge that I was a great halfback. As a matter of fact, if I hadn't given it up for a banking career, I might, my name, might have gone down. Mr. Carroll, I would like you to do me a favor. Well, I'll be glad to, Bob. If in some wild moment I should ever ask you to speak again, please punch me in the mouth. Well, I, I mean, the kids seem to love it. Naturally. I personally thought it was the most incredible speech I have ever heard in my life. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. White. No, Mr. Carroll isn't home. What? Yeah, I'll have him call you back. Liz! 
Was that for me? No, Miss Carol. I found a new ceramic cake. It was upstairs. Barney White called for the newspaper. He's going to print Mr. Carroll's speech. Oh, dear. Here we go again. You know, I can't... I can't understand why Mr. Carroll keeps making all these speeches all the time. Well, it's sort of a creative outlet for him, I guess. Well, having three daughters is pretty creative. Yes, but he always wanted a son. And there was nothing I could do about that. <laughs> Want some coffee? I'd love some. Hi, everybody. Well, hello, dear. Hello, Miss Carroll. Hello, Liz. Well. Agnes, I wish you'd right. been a... Yeah. <laughs> what an afternoon. How'd the speech go? Well, the kids just loved it. What did Mr. Wilson say? He said it was the most incredible speech he'd ever heard. Oh. How did he mean that? Incredibly good or incredibly bad? The kids loved it. Oh. I'll bet they did. What was the speech about, Mr. Carroll? Manners, Liz. I'll get the coffee. <laughs> oh, no mail here of any importance. Tell me, are you sure that speech was about manners? Well, would I say it was if it wasn't? Yes. Well, would you like to hear my speech? Haven't I? Not this one. Oh. I only heard it the other day myself, some fellow on the radio. You stole it? Well, stole isn't the word. Although it's close. <laughs> Howard, every time you make one of those hi, speeches, hi, you know hi, that... Everybody. Oh, hello, hello, girls. Hello, dear. Oh, you should have oh, heard Daddy's speech. It was simply wonderful. Don't hang up your coat. I'll do it in a minute. Right now. I'm going out again in a little while. Right now. But gee, Mom... Right now. Karen. <laughs> well, Daddy... We want you to know that the girls of the junior and senior classes support your stand and were moved to action by your stirring words. Hear that, dear? Will you sign this, Mother? What is it? It's a petition, and we've already got over a hundred signatures. And, Daddy, we want you to know that we'll back you against any and all opposition, regardless of the consequences. I would. Have you seen this? What? We, the undersigned, do here with subscribe to the statement of Howard G. Carroll, quote, I would abolish gymnasium for girls because it infringes on their rights as individuals and no one should be forced to do anything he doesn't want to do, unquote. Who, who put out this petition? The girls of the junior and senior classes. Well, you had no right to circulate a petition without asking me. Do you mean you said it and didn't mean it? Well... Howard, uh, what did you say? I said that one of the reasons that young men do not conform to the, to the rules of etiquette is because they see young girls playing volleyball and basketball, thus losing all sight of their femininity. And then you said... Well, then I might have extemporaneously added that uh, maybe there should be a, a change, a new method of gym for girls. Well, what sort of change, dear? Hmm? Oh, oh well, I mean, uh, instead of all going in for those rough sports, maybe they could take long walks during those periods. You know, walk, walk in the woods. Well, I'll bet the school board's out right now looking for the highest tree in town. Oh, excellent. Coffee, anyone? I'll have some. Well, I think Daddy absolutely put his finger on the root of the problem. I think your speech was positively breathtaking. I think all men stink. Hi, <laughs> well, Don't retract that statement just because I'm here. I wasn't going to. Oh. What's wrong between you and Tommy today? He wants me to be a cheerleader. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. If you want to be a cheerleader, I just don't want to be a cheerleader. Oh, why don't you put a washer on that drip? He's not a drip. He just frightens you because he's got brains. Thank you, Ginger. We're not talking about you. We're talking about Tommy Green. Well, Tommy doesn't frighten Eddie, though, does he? Oh, you're a big four-letter man. All right, all right. All, all right, all right. Quiet! Where's Lizzie, Mom? She's in the kitchen. Oh, Daddy, I forgot to tell you. I got the lead in the school play, Victoria Regina. Victoria Regina is a wonderful play, and it's a great part, too. You know, I once played the Prince Consort. 
Howard, you did not. Huh? Oh, I thought you left the room. <laughs> anyway, it was a play like it. It was a similar play. You know? Joni, do you want to come upstairs and read a few scenes with me? Okay. Call me when Eddie comes, will you, Mom? I will. Howard, Barney White called from the newspaper. He's going to print your speech. Mm, must have created quite a stir, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll get it. You know, Howard, if you continue with this sort of reasoning, you're going to contract a very serious disease called hoof in the mouth. Very clever. You ought to send that into Reader's Digest. <laughs> well, hello, Tommy. Come in. Hi, Miss Girl. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Mr. Girl. Hi. Down, no, Eddie's here. Oh, it's Eddie. Hello, Hello, Eddie. Hello, Mother. Well, Mr. Carroll, how do you feel today? Fine, but don't quote me. I don't want any more, you know, petitions. <laughs> yeah, that certainly was an incredible speech you made at school today. Yeah, yeah. dear? Thanks. After school, all the guys were bowing to the girls and holding their coats. It was a regular 18th century ball. Too bad Sir Walter Raleigh here had to miss it. Eight o'clock rock, a nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock rock. You got to rock around of the clock tonight. The wedding clock's back on. Get together, go to have some fun. We gonna rock around the clock tonight. Yeah, rock, rock, rock in the ball tonight. We gonna rock, we gonna rock around the clock tonight. Ba, 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 ba. That always makes my father nervous. <laughs> he must be awfully high strung. <laughs> oh, I knew there was something I had to tell you, Mr. Carroll. Football practice starts tomorrow. Uh, did you hear that, dear? No, I'm tuned out. So, uh, get your tickets earlier, you don't get a chance to see me run. <laughs> hi, Knucklehead. Junior. Oh, hi, punk. Tell him what happened yesterday. No, it'll embarrass him. If there's anything that can embarrass him, I'd like to know what it is. Huh? Now, let's hear it. Yesterday after school, when the track team was out, I went over and I challenged him to a hundred-yard dash. And what happened? I ran him into the ground. You mean you beat him? By five yards! By three yards. And had a bad foot. You did not. I'm ready, Eddie. Oh, let's go. Eddie, what happened to your foot? I, uh, I sprained it. When? Yesterday. But you weren't limping this afternoon. Yeah, let's go. It's a little late, huh? <laughs> As for you, young lady, from now on, I wish you'd please remember that you're a girl. I wish I'd been born a boy. So do I, but your mother was in a rut. <laughs> Pop? Yes? Pop, do you love me? Well, of course I love you. I'm glad. Because you're really going to have to. Now, what do you suppose that means? Well, I don't know. But they're going to have to take Virginia on very long walks. You can say that again. Hey, Lizzie. Yeah? Are you hanging up Virginia's coat? Yes, I am. What? Well, I just don't want you to spoil her, that's all. Nobody's spoiling her, Howard. You spoiled the other two. That's silly. It's not silly. She's right. How? Well, they kiss you and bully you into doing anything they like. But the minute Virginia tries to do something, then you become the father. I don't see why she should be handicapped just because she wasn't a boy. That's why she hung up her coat. So there. I don't know. I never seem to win one of these things. <laughs> I'll get it. Listen, Agnes. If you'd have listened to me, we wouldn't have had all this trouble about gym for girls and running foot races. What do you mean? Three times I told you, have a son. <laughs> I guess I wasn't listening. <laughs> you never. Tommy Green. Hello, Mrs. Carroll. Hi, Mr. Tommy. Hello, Tommy. Come on in. Ginger, Tommy's here. Tell him to wait. Wait. Yes, sir. Well, sit down. Thank you, sir. Then wait here.
I heard your speech today, Mr. Carroll. And after assembly, I went up to Mr. Wilson and I slapped him on the back and said, Hiya, Bob. Really? What happened? He threw me out of school. <laughs> you mean he expelled you? No, he just grabbed me by the back of the neck and threw me out of school. <laughs> Tommy, you don't play football, do you? No, sir. Boy, I wish I were back in school. I'd run that Eddie Davis racket. Mr. Carroll, you said that... Did I ever tell you about my football days? Yes, sir. Hmm? <laughs> oh, hi, Ginger. What do you want? There's something I have to tell you. Well, tell me. You don't have to be cheerleader if you don't want to. Thanks. I believe everyone should be able to do what he wants to do. Well, that's what I said in my in speech In principle, today. I believe everyone should be able to do whatever he wants to. It is the privilege of every American to think the way he wants, act the way he wants, and talk the way he that's wants. That's what I said in my speech today, the same identical thing. To deprive any person, man or woman, of his constant, of his... To deprive any person of his... I don't know what I was... Well, did you happen to hear this on the radio? No, I didn't. Well, the point is, Eddie, how do you feel about Virginia running foot races? I don't think she should do it. You mean I shouldn't compete against Eddie? Sure you should, but as a girl, not as a boy. Well, then you don't think of me as an equal. Sure I do, but I think he's a girl first. Well, I want to be an equal first. Well, go ahead. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, Virginia seems to have discovered a new sex. Boys, girls, and equals. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. I'll get it. Mr. Wilson. Hiya, Bob. Ow! <laughs> Hello, Bob. Come in. Let me have your coat. Thanks. Let's get right to the point, shall we? Fine. Because of your little speech, my life has become a model of exquisite misery. The girls demand that gym be abolished. I am plagued by boys who want to smoke in class. And this morning, I caught two kids necking in the corridor. So what? Well, if that isn't enough, you obviously haven't heard about Virginia. This afternoon, she reported for the boys' football team. <laughs> what? No. Oh, yes. Virginia, come in here. We'll get this thing settled right away. You call me, Pop? I certainly did. Hello, Mr. Wilson. You can say hello to him later. What's all of this nonsense about you playing football? Virginia, what on earth made you do a thing like that? Pop's speech. I've always wanted to be a football player. And he said everyone should be allowed to do what they want to do. I did not say that at all. I said nobody should be forced to do what he doesn't want to do. What's the difference? There's a great deal of difference. But, Pop, I'd make a great halfback. Young lady, I'll have you expelled. Let me remind you, sir, that the Bill of Rights and the Constitution guarantees every American citizen life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You gonna let her talk to me like that? She did already. <laughs> Pop, I don't ask to be on the team. All I ask is a chance to try out for it. But you're a girl. Lots of athletes are. But they don't play football against men. Because men won't let them. Oh, Pop, you're supposed to be sports. And all the time you're worrying whether or not we'll be equal to you. Or better than you. Well, there's only way to settle this thing. You go upstairs, we'll discuss it later. Yes, sir. Yes, come along, darling. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, what's your solution? Well, I think some of the things Ginger says make a lot of sense. I might have expected you to say something like that. What does the coach think? We don't pay the coach to think. You pay the coach to teach English. <laughs> don't you think a child should be allowed to seek her own fulfillment? No. Suppose she wanted to burn down the house, would you let her? Well, of course not. I try to show her why she was wrong. Why? Well, if she burned down the house, she'd have no place to live. Well, suppose she wanted to burn out one room. Well, that would depend upon which room. <laughs> anyway, if she felt that she had to do it, I might just let her. That's all. Well, how are we doing down here? We're burning down the house. <laughs> Agnes Howard had the temerity to tell me he'd let Virginia burn out a room in this house. Which room? Her own room. That's right next to ours. I can't help but change her room. <laughs> Howard, by the time the newspapers get through with your ridiculous speech and your daughter's ridiculous behavior, you'll be the laughing stock of the town. Agnes, it is my considered opinion that your husband is an overgrown juvenile delinquent. I 
better go after him. He forgot his coat. Oh, don't be silly. He won't get cold for a long time. <laughs> Mom? Yes? Where's the sewing box? It's in the kitchen. After all I said about a girl and her femininity, I hope Eddie Davis tackles her so hard her teeth will rattle for a week. <laughs> all right, what are you laughing at? Oh, you know very well you're proud and pleased and you give your elk's tooth to see her play. Well, you must think I'm insane. I do. I think you're the most wonderfully insane man I know. And I wouldn't have anyone else for the father of me children. Well, thanks. Neither would I. <laughs> I've got to take a tuck in these pants. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't you think she needs some padding? Howard! I mean the shoulders. The shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to the second act of Time Out for Ginger. And now your host, Bill Lundigan. More letters, Mr. Hoffman. All right, put them down, put them down. Howard, come in here for a moment, will you? Okay, Ed. I want you to read that letter. Dear Mr. Hoffman, as an old depositor of your bank, I wish to protest the speech made by your employee, Mr. Howard Carroll. Since this speech, my children have been completely unmanageable. Mr. Carroll is a vicious troublemaker and should be fired at once. This letter's for you. Keep reading. Well, I mean, there's no use getting all upset over one crank letter. Mm -hmm. Well, Howard, I haven't told you, but we've been getting those kind of letters all week, by the hundreds. What about the good ones? If one comes in, I'll save it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Howard Carroll? Yes, sir. Archer Enterprises, W.J. Archer President. Mr. Carroll, I read your speech in the paper. And I want you to know that I agree with every word you said. And I'd be proud to shake the hand of a man of your courage and convictions. Well, well thank you, Mr. Archer. Sort of restores my confidence to know that a responsible businessman like yourself feels the way I do. Sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Carroll, I have a transaction that I plan to put through one of the local banks. But since learning of your philosophy, I decided on this bank. And more particularly on you, sir. Well, you won't be sorry, Mr. Archer. We'll do everything in our power to be of service to you. In addition to the capital on hand, the project requires a loan of $250,000, which I shall be happy to put through your bank. $250,000? That's correct. Well, I... Excuse me a minute, will you? I'll just be a minute. Ed? What would you say if I were to tell you that I'm about to swing a $250,000 deal into the bank? Now, here. 250000 Mr. W.J. Archer, president of Archer Enterprises, wants to put the loan through us because he happened to admire the speech that I made. W.J. Archer? In person. All right, you've read a lot of letters from crackpots who don't like me. Now, I want you to come in and meet the type of man who thinks the way I do. Why, oh, of course. I'd be delighted. Well, well, well. Right in. Yes. Mr. Archer, this is the president of our bank, Mr. Ed Hoffman. How do you do, sir? Pleased to meet you, Hoffman. Thank sit you. down, sit down, gentlemen. Please. Let me tell you something, sir. You're pretty lucky to have a bright young man like Mr. Carroll working for you. Uh, yes. <laughs> we think so. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, Mr. Archer, that you want to negotiate a $250,000 loan. That's right. Just what is the nature of the project? It's in the vending machine field. Well, vending machines are a big business. Oh, big business. Very well, big, yes. I'm interested in the beverage end. Oh. They have machines dispensing nearly every kind of beverage, but there's one they overlooked. What's that? Cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Cocktail? Yeah. Cocktail? Well, only martinis, Manhattans, and daiquiris to start. We'll have machines on every street corner selling cocktails for 25 cents apiece. It's not impossible. Oh, but it is, it is, because you see, we have no overhead, no bartenders, no rent. What do you do about liquor licenses? <laughs> A matter of legislation. My wife is in Washington now, talking to our congressman. Well, Mr. Archer, I certainly hope that your wife will be able to convince Congress. She will. You don't know my Nelly. She carries an umbrella and she knows how to use it. Now, believe me, Hoffman, I have had resistance. I've had lots of them. Narrow-minded bigots, but gentlemen, think of the people on their way home from work, waiting on the corner for that hot, crowded bus. They step up to one of my machines and get a cocktail. Before you know it, we have happy people going home. Happy, happy, happy people. <laughs> Roger, as uh, <clears throat> you and Mr. Carroll see eye to eye on so many things, I'm going to put him in full charge of your account. Well, I think I'll have to have a little time to think about this, Mr. Archer. All right. But this deal is hot. I'll give you 24 hours, and then I'll have to take it to another bank. Well, that's the gamble we bankers have to take. Goodbye, Mr. Archer. Goodbye, Mr. Archer. My kindest regards to your wife and her umbrella. <laughs> Thank you. I'll tell her. Goodbye. Oh, those happy, 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 happy people. <laughs> All right, Ed. Go ahead, fire me. And get stuck with your admirers? Oh, no, it's not going to be that easy. Now, I want to tell you, Harold. I want to tell you that I have an idea that that speech of yours is going to have all kinds of repercussions, and I think the best thing that you can do is to get home now and talk it over with Agnes. Happy, happy, happy people. <laughs> yeah, he looks so nice, he wore spats and everything. I can't figure it out. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Mr. Hoffman, the Board of Trustees has called a meeting for next Tuesday, and they want to be sure that you and Mr. Carroll are present. Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Howard, you've been reading that magazine for two hours. Well, it isn't every day that my daughter has her picture on the cover of Life. A uh, banker's daughter tries out for football. They've even printed my speech. Well, I wouldn't be too happy about it. Why not? Well, from what Ed says, it may cost you your job at the bank. Don't you think you ought to ask Virginia to stop playing football? I am not going to deprive that child of her individual rights. All right, have it your way. You use it, lose your job, and we lose the house, and we can all go down and live under the bleachers. That's right. On Saturdays, you can sell peanuts. Peanuts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Miss Carol! Miss Carol! Any news? Not yet, but oh boy, what a practice session. Yeah. Well, listen, what about Virginia? Did she make the team? Oh, Coach Blake doesn't tell anybody left. They hit the locker rooms today. How do you know all these things? I'm an authority. I've been to every practice session, know every play by heart. <laughs> oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh! Oh, I'll get it. You go. Oh, come. All right. <laughs> I didn't put my picture on here. Printed hey, my speech. Hello, good, good evening. Good evening. Well, Agnes, how does it feel to be the wife of a national figure? Pretty awesome. Oh, you should have seen what happened this afternoon, after you left. As soon as that Life magazine hit the stands, people started streaming into the bank. No. I was just on the point of closing a deal when I heard what sounded like a, an uprising of, of savages in a Hollywood movie. And into the bank burst a group of our most respected citizens doing a snake dance and shouting, Boobalaka, Boobalaka, Sis Boom Ba, Howard, Carol, Ra, Ra, Ra. <laughs> That must have been thrilling. What'd you do? I? I am the president of that bank. Yeah. What could I do? I rushed out of my office and I... I got on the end of the line. <laughs> boomalaka, boomalaka, sis, boom, ba, Howard, cattle, ra, ra, ra. Boomalaka, boomalaka, sis, boom. Ba. <laughs> Sounds like a real convention. Oh, shocking, Agnes, just shocking. However, that is not what I came to talk about. All right, Ed, let's have it. Howie, I came over here to suggest 
that you asked Barney White to print a retraction of your stand on gymnasium for girls and to tell Virginia she is not to play football. And if I don't? Is there some great big moral issue involved here? Yes, I think there is. Well, I don't. Well, Ed, you, you sound serious Agnes, about this. that's entirely up to Howard. In six weeks, his employment contract comes up for renewal. Now, if Virginia is playing football and Howie is still the clown of the town, I am positive that that contract will not be approved. Let me tell you something, Ed. Agnes, 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 hold it, either. hold it, Agnes. Just a minute. Howard. Agnes, leave us alone. Just for one minute, will you please? Excuse me, I just remembered I have to go into the kitchen for no reason at all. <laughs> Ed, the reason I asked Agnes to leave us alone is because I want to thank you privately for mm -hmm. your loyalty and your understanding. Now look, this whole problem has a very simple solution. You are being entirely unreasonable. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, and I will not retract any statement I've ever made. I'll say anything I like whenever I like. And under no circumstances will I ask Virginia to stop playing football. Just remember that. Hey, Ginger! Hi, Pop. Did, did you make the team? Oh, Pop. What's the matter? I wasn't even given a fair chance. <laughs> Agnes, there's your answer, Ed. Virginia's upstairs. Did she make the team? No. That's what happens when you have an English teacher coaching football. Yeah. I bet she's a better halfback than most fullbacks. Well, folks, I'll be running along. I'm certainly glad that my little visit here didn't create any hard feelings. Bula, 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 bula. Howie Carroll, you're a fool. <laughs> Ed seems really upset about this. I don't care about Ed. I'm thinking about Virginia. She's taking it pretty hard. You were hoping she'd make the team, weren't you? Yes, I was. Well... Maybe it's just as well. At least I won't have to sell peanuts on Saturdays. I'll get the coffee. Pop? Yes, honey? Can I ask you a question? Well, of course. Is there a difference between boys and girls? <laughs> Well, you know, there are the birds and the, the bees. I know all about that slop. I'm talking about football. <laughs> football? The coach said that I can play smarter heads up football than Eddie Davis. He did? So what I'd like to know, Pop, is it because I'm a girl and he's a boy that he made varsity and I only made the second string? Well... What did you say? You made the second string? Yeah, but Eddie made varsity. Is that what you were crying about a little while ago? Sure. Baby, that's wonderful. Agnes, did you hear? She made the team. Peanuts! Gotcha, hot crusty peanuts! <laughs> for the last two Saturdays. Well, don't complain to me. Tell Liz. She's the boss. Oh, and tell Jeannie she better hurry up and get dressed for the play. Agnes! Yes, Liz? Agnes! Where is she? <laughs> I mean Crazy Legs Carol. That's what you're calling her now. What in the world happened to you? I tore down the gold pole. Why haven't you heard? No. The last two minutes of play, she scored a touchdown. 
A touchdown? Sit down, I'll tell you all about it. Right over here. It was the last two minutes of the game. The score. It was five, fourth down, and five yards ago, the enemy had the ball. Suddenly. And they were in the coffin corner. Yeah, well, where's that? On the two yard line. Oh. Anyway, the whistle blew. Why do they call it coffin corner? Because if you get nailed in it, you're dead. <laughs> Anyway, the whistle blew. Where's your daughter? She's on the bench. But there's only a couple of minutes to play. Isn't it wonderful? The whistle blew. There was a substitution. Virginia goes into the game. Everybody's screaming and howling. Everybody's screaming, Virginia. She said, oh, somebody stands up in front of me. I can't see a thing. I said, sit down before I knock you down. <laughs> no, she sat down. <laughs> Virginia gets into a huddle like this. And the screaming, the is Ginger. Ginger, I'm completely quiet. I'm moved. I can just imagine. Okay, fourth and ten. The enemy has the ball. They kick. It's a long one. Virginia takes it in her own court. She rushes down. They come after her. She has no interference. She's at the 50. She's at the 40. She takes off attacker at the 35. She gets down to the 30, and she's trapped. <laughs> 5,000 people shouting and yelling. Reverse your field, I yell. She hears me. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, there are only three men between her and the goal. Three men? What do you think she does? She rushes. She sidearms me. She hurdles the other two. And then she dances down the sideline. <laughs> For a touchdown. <laughs> for a minute there. For a minute, minute there, I thought she'd never make it. What a game. <laughs> Shrewd coach, that Blake. I thought you didn't like him. I didn't like him as an English teacher. Oh. <laughs> a great coach. Here we are. Up the daisy. Thank you. That was real good. Oh, boy. There. I wonder where that kid learned to run like that. I used to be able to run. Yeah, I remember. Can't run as fast as you used to, can you? Oh, how did the children come in here? So what? They might as well know we have our individual rights, too. <laughs> I haven't been this excited since you and I were 18. I didn't know you when you were 18. <laughs> you did, too? I was 27. <laughs> You're more attractive now than you were then. So are you. We always get back to that. <laughs> Ah, I wish Virginia played football every day. <laughs> hey, do we have to go to that play tonight? We certainly do. Hello, Daddy. Hey, beautiful. Did I tell you about the game? No. It was the last few minutes of play. No, and your sister. Oh, what a game. Fight him, Ginger. Fight him, fight him. Beat him, Ginger. Beat him, beat him. That's right, down. Let's be like Miss oh. Carol! Miss Carol, have you heard? Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> it's all right, Liz. We have no secrets. Say, you should have seen the game. I did. I saw the kinescope. <laughs> hey, you know, I tried to explain the game to her. She doesn't know anything about football. Isn't it wonderful? And wasn't she cute? She was magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about the fight him, Junior. Fight him, fight him. <laughs> Did he tell you everything that happened this afternoon? Everything. Well, would you like to hear my version? No, thank you. Oh. Baby, hello, darling. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Ginger. Well, what's Hi, the matter? Mother. Nothing. Ginger, you were just wonderful. What's the matter, darling? Everything.
But you made a touchdown this afternoon. Oh, Mom, I'm miserable. Well, what happened? Well, it was the last few seconds of the game, see? And the boys called timeout because they wanted me to play. Then they gave me the ball and opened a hole up the center that a slow freight could have gone through. They were determined I'd score. Well, isn't that the purpose of the game? Oh, but, Mom, they all treated me like I was something special. Not an equal. Well, how about those three men that had you trapped? When I got to them, I just slowed down. By that time, I didn't want the touchdown. I wanted them to tackle me. And they didn't? They were laughing so hard, they fell flat on their faces. <laughs> I had to score. But that touchdown won the game, Mom. Well, that's what I understood. By the time I got into the game, we were leading 34 to nothing. <laughs> Well, I've been had. <laughs> then they picked me up on their shoulders like a curio and marched me around the fields. Both teams with pop leading them. <laughs> Agnes, listen to what I... Welcome home, son. <laughs> Howard. And now, once again, your host, Bill Lundigan. I would like to say that your mayor is a regular guy. The kind of a man you can walk up to and slap him on the back. Another speech, say, Daddy? Yes, honey. Hey, that's a real smooth suit. It ought to be. I've been wearing it 30 years. <laughs> you can walk up and slap him on the back and say, Hi, Sam. A regular, regular. Hey, you look sensational. Well, thanks. The way things are going, it'll probably be the last dress I'll be able to afford. Come here a minute. You know, I think you're prettier than any of our girls. You do? Mm -hmm. Do we have to go to that play tonight? Oh, well. <laughs> Hello. Well, really, you look beautiful. I helped her dress, Mom. And did you? I was her lady in waiting. Do you like it, Daddy? Like it? I wish I knew how to curtsy. <laughs> Thank you. Lizzie! You call me Miss Carol? Oh, I want you to take a look at our little star. Oh, but I'm not sure you're not more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look kind of cute there, Lizzie. I always dress for opening nights. Yes, we have so many of them in this town. I believe the last one was Edwin Booth. <laughs> Here are the keys to the car, Liz. Oh, I'll get it out of the garage. Okay. Oh, gee. Oh, be awfully regal, darling. I will. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Your Majesty. And remember what I told you. Don't lope. I won't. <laughs> Makes me feel like the Dowager Queen. <laughs> Night, Mr. Carroll. Night. Is it a little cool out here for you, Ginger? No, Pop. What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, there must be something. I mean, is it because Tommy doesn't come around anymore? I don't know, Pop. I just feel kind of funny and unhappy. Well, when I was your age, I felt funny all the time. But, Pop, when you were my age, didn't you ever go on dates? Did I go on dates? <laughs> I had a girl for every day of the week. You did? Yeah. Of course, it was the same one, your mother. <laughs> Did you ever take long walks together and just talk? Well, I wasn't much on talking or walking either. What did you do? Well, we sat mostly. 
Did you ever go dancing? Your mother danced, I sat. <laughs> I'd love to have dates and go dancing. Or take long walks together and just talk. Pop, would you do me a favor? Well, of course I would. Will you take me to that play tonight? I want to get all dressed up and have a date. It will be a great honor. What time will you call for me? About 8.15. I won't keep you waiting. Well, you should. It's one of the first rules of being a girl, you know. Hi, Mom. Well, what are you so excited about? I've got a date. With whom? A real dreamboat. Well, who's Virginia got a date with? Me. Well, dreamboat, you're really sailing tonight. Yeah. Oh, hello. Well, come in. Virginia, it's someone to see you. Who is it, Mom? I'm getting dressed. Oh, it's you. What do you want? I came to ask you to the play. No, thank you. Why not? Because it's all your fault I'm not accepted as a girl. My fault? Yes, your fault. If you hadn't been so petty and narrow-minded, you would have taken me out these past weeks and said, this is my girl. She plays football. <laughs> Why not? People laugh. And you're afraid they're laughing at you. You're a coward, Tommy Green. That's not true. You're passive instead of active. And I never want to see you again. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Well, you certainly patch things up. What can I do about it? I'll tell you what you can do about it. The secret of success with women is never let them dominate you. Howard, answer the door. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm so mad I could go up and drag her down bodily. A halfback? Hi, Mr. Carroll. Hi, Eddie. Oh. I'll get Joan. Man, yeah. Gee, Mr. Carroll, you sure were excited out there today. I thought you were going to flip it. Well, hello, Greeny. What are you doing here? <laughs> Why? Well, I thought Ginger would give you the brush. You did? Oh, I get it, I get it. She asked you to the play. Now, what does that mean? Well, all the guys on the team are taking their uh, best dates, so why shouldn't she take pretty little you? <laughs> I hate violence. Oh, I can see that. But someplace a man must take an active stand. You, uh, you all right? Fine. That's what I call sportsmanship. <laughs> good night, Dad. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Good night, dear. Have a good time. Yeah. You coming, athlete? Oh, yes, dear. <laughs> well, good night, everyone. Good night. Tommy Green! Aren't you going to ask me that play tonight? I did ask you. Well, aren't you going to ask me again? All right. You want to go to the play tonight? Sure. Come on, let's go. Bye, everyone. Good night, Rocky. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, I'd like to talk to your girl for just a minute. It's getting kind of late. Yeah, you come along with me, Mr. Green. I want to have a little chat. Ginger, come here a minute, will you? Yeah, Pa? Before you leave, I... I just want to tell you that I think you're a very, very pretty girl. Thanks, Pa. Oh, I'm sorry I had to break our date. That's all right. Pop. Yeah? Are you sorry I'm not a boy? I wouldn't trade you for any boy in the world. Especially Eddie. <laughs> Pop, I'm going to give up football. What? From now on, I'm going to spend all my time just being a girl. Well, if you want to be a girl, you go right ahead and be a girl. 
and I'm not going to stand in your way. Virginia, Tommy's waiting. Good there. night, Pop. Good night, baby. Good night, oh. Mom. You, you really look lovely. Thanks. Agnes. What? You want to know something? Yeah? Virginia's given up football. How do you like that? Giving up football? She could have been a star. Well, now, don't take it so hard. Look at it this way. You're not losing a halfback, you're gaining a daughter. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, do we have to go to that play tonight? <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, suppose you've been married for six years and you're on your way home from a vacation when, without warning, your wife disappears into thin air. Well, that's our story next week on Climax, Thin Air, adapted by Ben Starr. And right now, I'd like to have you meet our cast. Here's Robert Sterling, who plays the husband, Ames Coriel. Marguerite Chapman is Kathy, Ames' secretary. And Pat O'Brien as Detective Lieutenant Fox. Hi, y'all. Hi, Marguerite. Hi, Bob, good. this is your first time with us on Climax, isn't it? That's right, Bill. May I say it's a great pleasure to be making my debut in next week's exciting story, Thin Air. Nice to have you with us. And Marguerite, this is your not, not your first time, but it's nice to have you with us, too. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure. And it's a pleasure to play secretary to a good-looking boss like Bob Sterling. Well, and yeah. Pat, we're tickled pink to have you back for a return engagement, too. Thank you, Bill. I'm playing a real offbeat part in this one. He's a real character. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> well, there's our cast for this most unusual and mysterious story next week on Climax. Thin Air, based on a novel by Howard Brown. This is Bill Lundigan saying thank you, and don't miss it. Star Playhouse series starring David Niven in Firing Squad. Star of Stars has been a CBS Color Television Network production. Every Thursday, enjoy.